Chapter 18 The Good Name of Stories in Grey. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Julia Mikheva. Stories in Grey by Barry Payne. There was once a girl of whom her friends, that is to say her enemies, used to observe. You never would have thought it to look at her. Nor would you. She had the wandering and affectionate eyes of a child. There was not a vestige of cruelty in her pretty mouth. If there was any vanity in the way she did her brown hair, it was the vanity that finds its best means in simplicity. Her voice was low and sympathetic. Her general appearance suggested, if anything, an unusual degree of shyness. The girl had left a trail of broken hearts behind her. She had done all that was mad and wicked and shameless and delightful. But certainly you would never have thought it if you had looked at her. She was just twenty-three when she first of all heard of the flower which is called the flower of the good name. Everybody about her believed in the existence of that flower, chiefly perhaps because no one had ever found it. It was to be found only by the most virtuous among women. A few unkind words and their chance was gone the most inconsiderable flirtation, and you would never find the white flower. This girl never even looked for it. Her girlfriends made a point of going to look for it every Sunday. Uncharitable people said that they did this in order to improve their reputations. It was a way of saying that they conscientiously believed that they had a chance. But the shameless girl never went to look for it at all. Early on a summer morning, she went for a bathe. As she came back from the seashore, with her wet hair hanging down her back and not looking quite so nice as usual, she was conscious that she had swum far and that the morning was hot and that it would be no bad thing to sit down and rest. Her seat was a boulder of granite. She sat there and whistled a tune, which was disgraceful and boylike, and looked across the meadow before her. And there in the meadow she found it, a white flower, shaped like a seven red star, each petal edged with gold and a heart of gold in the center. She gave an exclamation of surprise, which was slightly vulgar. Then she bent down and examined the flower more closely. Then she picked it and kissed it. What was she to do next? The first thing was to take that flower to some man of science and learning and to get its genuineness fully established. Then she would go and visit all those cats, who, as she was well aware, were in the habit of saying things about her and she would wear that flower conspicuously so that they might see it. But she would talk only of the weather, so that they might think that her finding of the flower was to her but a trifle, which she had always known must happen one day or another. Then she changed her mind. No good woman could have changed her mind with greater rapidity than did this sinful little vixen. No, it was no good. All the learning and science affidavits and sworn statements in the world would never have convinced anybody that she had found the white flower. Really, she could hardly believe it herself. She looked back over her past. She was only twenty-three, but she had quite a good deal of past. As she thought out its tempestuous incidents, there were times when she smiled, and times when her eyes grew sad, and once when she closed them all together. It was beyond belief. It couldn't be true that she had found the white flower. Well, there it was in her hand, and the gold of its pollen had stained her red lips. Then the thought came to her that perhaps, after all, she had found this flower not by virtue of her past, but by virtue of her future, not for what she was, but for what she was to become. She took the flower home and pressed it between the leaves of a missile and said nothing whatever about it. But she was going to be a little saint now, and on this point she didn't change her mind. Years afterwards, her friends, that is to say her enemies, used to observe, yes, but you should have known her as she used to be. Such testimony, and here and there a little gratitude, and her consciousness of her goodness, were all the rewards that her goodness ever got. And of these, the last was most satisfying. There came an evening when she had watched the sun setting to music, and felt too unearthly for anything. That evening she went to her missile and took out the flower and carried it with her to a man of great learning. He immediately fired three Latin words right into the middle of it. 
and one of these words was vulgaris. It has sometimes been confused, he added, with the flower of the good name. Really, said the saint, with an intelligent smile, give a woman a good name, and she may as well hang herself. I beg pardon, said the man of learning coldly. She didn't repeat the statement. She went away to find some lonely and appropriate spot where she might cry. End of chapter 18 The Good Name End of Stories in Grey by Barry Payne